Good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to um, June 1, 2020, Dare County Board of Commissioners uh, meeting. <clears throat> this morning, I have um, an invocation from um, that I'd like to read that uh, uh, the Reverend uh, <laughs> Chaplain Cherry Wheeler uh, has been before us many times, and she's... Um, presented this uh, invocation. <clears throat> Gracious God, we again gather to conduct the business of the county. First, we're thankful for our citizens who have supported local and state policies concerning the coronavirus, especially our health care professionals and first responders who continue to serve during these difficult times. We offer a special prayer for the Horton and Perez families in the recent home fire that took a mother and her son. Bring these families to your comfort as they hold on to one another and their precious memories of Raven and Sabin. We ask you, O oh Lord, to endure us with your wisdom and discernment as we plan for the future and consider our 2021 budget today. May the items funded in the coming year bring the most benefit to our citizens and our many visitors. May those who are appointed today to the various boards, commissions, and councils throughout the county serve with integrity and excellence. And may we continually seek your face as we navigate these uncertain times before us. May we bring forth policies and guidelines that will restore economic prosperity to our businesses owners while keeping the public safe. Gracious God, go before us and light our path that all that we do and say today will bring honor and glory to you. These things we pray. Amen. 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 May we stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <clears throat> County Manager. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, item one on the agenda is the Chairman's opening remarks. Thank you, County Manager. A uh, number of items this morning. Be, be, bear with me uh, for a few moments. Um, the uh, We've mentioned this, but I think it's important that we... Uh, uh, mentioned this again. Um, as most of you are aware, uh, the 82nd uh, season of the Lost Colony uh, has been um, canceled this year uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As uh, most of you are aware, this 82nd season was supposed to be dedicated to the, uh, or is to the 150th anniversary of Dare County. So um, just keep uh, the lost colony uh, in your thoughts and prayers, and, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to uh, next season. Um, recently, um, the, um, most of you are aware of the room at the end. Um, <coughs> churches participate, um, all of our majority, a bunch of our churches in the area participate in this program uh, annually. Um, to um, help um, individuals who are um, homeless, and they do a phenomenal job where they bring those folks in and feed them and put them up for the evening. I've just been asked by Reverend Jody Moore, who's the president of the DARE uh, Ministerial Association, to um, recognize Kitty Hawk United Methodist Church um, during their 2019-2020 season, um, they, um, they, they brought in folks, um, and um, they did this for like um, three to, most of these churches do it for like a week. Kitty Hawk um, did this um, five consecutive weeks in a row, which is pretty phenomenal. But once again, all of our churches participate, and I can't... Um, uh, thank all of our churches enough for all the work that they do for our um, homeless folks. And 
we just uh, want to um, commend them, uh, everyone, for everything that they uh, that they do uh, to to uh, help our homeless folks. Um, last week, uh, I sent a copy to each of you um, where. Um, a lot of our businesses are struggling, as you very well know, for these J-1 visa um, uh, students to come in and help us with the season. So I sent um, a letter to uh, Representative Murphy and uh, to uh, Senator Tillis uh, on behalf of the board asking them if they would uh, certainly help us um, uh, get some of those students in uh, to help with our season. I don't... I don't I'd have to yield to uh, uh, Commissioner Bateman if it's if it's too late now for that to even happen or make a difference. But um, I, I haven't gotten a response back from them yet. But I know that uh, a lot of our businesses out there are suffering um, by not having these individuals in here and working. So um, I don't know what the result of that's going to be. But um, we, we I did want to. Uh, uh, make make you aware that uh, that uh, I sent those letters on behalf of the board. Um, recently, uh, and this is this is just uh, par for the course for a lot of our uh, employees in Dare County, but in particular, we know extremely um, how well and how fortunate we are to have Donna as our planning director. Um, and she, uh, she was just recently featured in, in Making Waves. Uh, it's East Carolina Magazine. Um, and they did an article uh, on her with uh, uh, the title of it was Donna Creef 88 Protects Dare County Water and Property. So um, that's uh, the year she was graduated from East Carolina. Um, so... Um, She's uh, uh, done quite a bit for us as a county planning director since she took over from uh, uh, Ray Sturza once, once he retired. But um, she oversees the development of unincorporated areas of the county, which certainly include Hatteras, the mainland, Roanoke Island, Collington, which most of you folks out there know is west of Kill Devil Hills <coughs> and, uh, and uh, Martins Point. Um, she states that, uh, and how true this is, water is a part of everyday life here on the Outer Banks. Uh, she says, uh, and how <laughs> right she is, we drive over it, uh, we work on it, and we play in it. And, um, and, and it's very critical to the, uh, uh, the success of, of Dare County. Um, she says very, very busy uh, in protecting um, the natural resources of its importance since our local economy, of course, uh, revolves around beaches and the sound. The big issue, as we all know right now, is uh, flood maps for Dare County, and they go into effect June uh, this month. And many of those properties are oceanfront properties um, that have certainly flooded in the past, and there's a concern that property owners will not realize the flood hazards associated with their property. And I reiterate that today. We've had an ongoing um, promotion out here for almost a year now of, um, of saying, um, you know, just because your flood zone changes doesn't necessarily uh, mean that you should uh, cancel your flood, flood uh, coverage because we know that the last two storms that we've had, uh, those numbers weren't even included in the data that brought about these new uh, flood zones. And uh, in response to those concerns, um, uh, this board, uh, you know, has adopted some regulatory efforts to treat the reclassification of properties as, as they were in the flood zone. And that means owners uh, will have to raise structures uh, to locally applied elevation marks. This is a progressive approach that, that we're having in North Carolina and as an example of the dedication that this board and our planning has to ensure our communities are, are resilient from flood hazards. And these are statements that Don has made. Uh, we've been very successful in Dare County with securing FEMA mitigation grants over the past decade 
And I knew that we had elevated quite a few homes, but I didn't realize it was to the extent that we've elevated close to 100 homes uh, here in uh, Dare and unincorporated Dare. Um, so that's uh, that's that's a, f a phenomenal feat. So hats off to Donna and great uh, publicity. And I was glad to see that she got some recognition in in uh, in the news uh, about what she's doing. Uh, to help uh, protect Dare County, um, and um, hats off to uh, to Donna uh, for for the work she does for us. Um, I have got two um, announcements that um, the governor has um, announced um, as of um, May 30. Uh, the governor signed an executive order 142 to extend the prohibition of utility shutoffs and implement a moratorium on evictions. Uh, the, the order went into effect on May the 30th, and um, the order um, is in effect immediately, and it'll, it will last for about three weeks, um, would prevent landlords from initiating summary injections of other eviction proceedings against tenants, for non-payment of, of uh, late payment of rent, prevents landlords from uh, assessing late fees or other penalties for late non-payment, prevents the accumulation of additional interest fees or other penalties for existing fees while this order is in effect, requires landlords to give tenants a minimum of six months to pay outstanding rents, requires uh, leases to be modified to disallow evicted tenants for reasons for late payment, and it uh, makes clear that evictions for reasons related to health or safety uh, can take place. So that went into effect um, May 30. Now today, uh, the governor uh, has asked all the North Carolina Illinians to observe the day of mourning to honor people who have passed uh, from COVID-19. Uh, the governor, governor Cooper encourages all North Carolinians to um, um, uh, grieve the 100,000 plus uh, people in the United States, including almost 1,000 in North Carolina who've lost their COVID-19 uh, life to COVID-19. And this is an opportunity to remind ourselves that our death count's not just a number, it it's represents uh, citizens uh, of this country. Um, and uh, he encourages North Carolinians to join in this mo uh, moment of silence in honor of people who have lost their lives uh, in the wake of this uh, cruel virus. Uh, more than 100 um, <coughs> leaders of faith-based organizations, including Christians, Jews, Muslims, houses of worship across the country, are leading this national move moment of silence on Monday, June 1, at noon today, at noon today. Uh, local and state leaders throughout the nation are joining the call for silence, including the uh, Governor's Association of the United States. And Cooper will order all state flags to be lowered at half-staff in memory of those who have passed away from a coronavirus. So that, uh, once again, takes place effective today. County Manager, that completes the uh, Chairman's comments. <coughs> Chairman, next on the agenda, item two is the public comment, and we'll take a minute to see if we get any public comment by email. Okay. Okay, County Manager. Yes, sir. Uh, next on the agenda is the recognition of the county service. Um, over the last couple of months, we have not, uh, under the COVID regulations, uh, brought our staff in to recognize them for their time that they've worked with the county. Um, 
those have accumulated over time, and, and while we've given them their service pins uh, by their department heads, we did want to publicly recognize these people for the hard work that they do and for the number of years that they've dedicated uh, to their to the county and for the work that they've done. And so what I've asked the staff to do was to provide me with the folks that uh, were supposed to receive service pins in April and May. Uh, and if, with your permission, I'll go through those. It'll take me a minute or so to tell you a little bit about these folks. But the, the idea here is to thank them and to publicly recognize them for the services that they have given. Um, first on my list, I have Nancy Nedley. Um, she's a public health nurse, and she's, she's received her 10-year pin back in April. She's the primary clinical nurse and is a valuable member of the health department team. Uh, she orders the supplies for the three clinic sites under a, under a strict budget that they have in place. She helps orient and train the new staff and also acts, up, acts as the backup lab manager. As a skilled phlebotomist, she's often called upon for difficult lab draw patients. And she also teaches classes for diabetes patients. <coughs> she assures all of the clinical equipment's in good working order and that quality controls and cleaning schedules are followed. Her coworkers value her as knowledgeable, willing to help with questions and coming through in a pinch. Um, she is an essential part of the clinical team. And as you can see, she, she carries on multiple functions. Uh, so we'd like to thank Nancy for her 10 years of service. Next, we have Laurie Kellogg. Uh, she's an administrative specialist with the Water Department, um, and she too has 10 years of service. You all may not know Laurie, but you know her name because you get a report from her about once a week on things that are going on in the Water Department. So uh, Laurie does an excellent job for the department as an administrative specialist. Uh, she's constantly working on multiple projects as well as our customer service. She takes care of the customers in a busy office, processes and posts all water payments and returns calls to the customers. She processes all water uh, tax hydrant and meter payments and water applications for the department. She's dependable and caring employee. She works well with our staff and works well with the public. Uh, she's a problem solver and she exercises courtesy, tact and respect when interacting with coworkers, supervisors and the public. So again, we'd like to thank Laurie for her 10 years of service to the county. Uh, next is Nettie Midget. Uh, Net Nettie is a senior sales analyst in the revaluation department. Uh, she's received her 25-year pin uh, back in April. Uh, she began her career with Dare County as a real property appraiser. She spent her first years in the field measuring and listing residential construction. Uh, 20 years ago, she started as a sales analyst and willingly took on the supervision of other appraisers. She currently serves as a senior sales analyst and land transfer tax administrator. Nettie analyzes and verifies every real estate transfer in the county and also administers the land transfer tax program. The excise tax she <coughs> assesses for related sales transactions brings in approximately $6 million in revenue annually. She's an astute appraiser with a vast knowledge of the market and the trends in Dare County. Uh, one note is Nettie received last year from a property owner says it all. Thank you so much for all your help. The perfect blend of professional with personal. <coughs> so thank you, Nettie, for your 25 years of service to Dare County. <clears throat> Next, we move to the May recipients. Uh, first is Kelly McPherson. Uh, Kelly's an administrative specialist with general services and she received her 15 year pin uh, back in May. Uh, Kelly started in Dare County as a custodian and served there for three years. She then moved to general services and an administrative, as an administrative specialist. An uh, administrative specialist is a floater and our floaters serve all over the county and perform various functions in multiple departments as they're needed. Um, she's very dedicated and detail oriented and can do whatever task you give her and she does it well. Uh, we look forward to 15 more years from Kelly and thank her for her services as well. Next is Wendy Parks. She's an administrative specialist in the sheriff's office and she too has 15 years of service. Uh, she originally worked at the detention center and has been at the main sheriff's office since November of 2012. She, process, she process, processes the citizens carry concealed permits paperwork. Um, she also takes care of, the, of entering court, domestic violence orders, and other information in regards to the criminal information national network. She handles some of the paperwork entries for Captain Wilson, who takes care of the patrol operations side of the, of the sheriff's office, 
and she's certainly there and brightens up the office every day. So we'd like to thank Wendy for her 15 years of service as well. <clears throat> Next is Joanne Selby. She's an administrative specialist with social services, and she too received a 15-year pin uh, back in May. Joanne came to social services from the Dare County School System. Uh, she worked in the Family Services Unit as an office assistant. And in 2008, she was promoted to a senior office assistant and worked in the Economic Services Division until 2012 uh, when she moved to the front desk reception. <coughs> Joanne celebrated her last day of service uh, this past Friday as she retired after her 15 years of service. Uh, we wish her the best and, again, thank her for the 15 years that she dedicated to Dare County. Um, Sandra Schull is a warehouse technician fleet maintenance shop, and she received her 20-year pin. Uh, she started with the county fleet maintenance on May 1st, 2000. Um, she's responsible for the procurement of all the inventory and parts needed for the Dare County fleet and does this with a high degree of accuracy. Her attention to detail is phenomenal, and she processes thousands of orders and transactions on her credit card and keeps extremely accurate records. Overall, Sandra's a great asset to fleet maintenance, and she's dependable and can always be counted on uh, to help them out. Uh, so again, we'd like to thank Sandra for her 20 years of service to Dare County. Next is Jackie Tillett. Um, Jackie's a senior election specialist, and she has 35 years of service. Uh, we don't get many of, of those, and uh, we don't order very many of those 35-year pins, so there's only <laughs> been a few of those that have come by. Uh, Jackie began her career in building inspections and planning, where among her many responsibilities, she served as clerk to the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, in 2013, she transferred to the elections as the deputy director. She goes above and beyond the call of taking tasks, creating better ways to make the election process run smoother, and goes the extra mile to assist poll workers, voters, and the director. She's organized, communicates her ideas clearly, works efficiently and effectively as she follows through all of her tasks through completion. Uh, again, 35 years is something to be proud of, and we thank Jackie for her 35 years of service. Uh, so now we're to June, and these are the June recipients. Uh, Lee George is a, de is a detention shift leader at the jail. Uh, he received his 15-year pin. Uh, Leanne began her career with the county as a detention officer. Uh, she's been a standout among her peers and was, has been promoted to sergeant. Her loyalty and dedication show as she supervises her shift and strives each day to bring out the best in everyone. When an officer recently lost all of their property to a house fire, she was the first one uh, there to rally support for uh, this officer. She's been a dedicated <coughs> and loyal pro employee to the county for 15 years. But beyond that, she's been and will continue to be a dedicated and loyal friend to all the people that she meets in her life. So we'd like to thank uh, Lee for her 15 years of service as well. Next is uh, Aubrey Rimage, uh, is a fitness quarter at, at Older Adult Services. She received a 15-year pin. Uh, Audrey's passion for senior fitness is something that is contagious. She has built the senior fitness program and teaches the step and high-low impact aerobics Tai Chi, uh, meditation, yoga, and chair classes. She works closely with outside instructors to provide other classes for our seniors. As the events director for the Outer Bank Senior Games, she's also volunteered for many years in Raleigh at the state finals for the North Carolina Senior Games. She is constantly increasing her knowledge of senior fitness and through this pandemic has post posted exercise and fitness information on our Facebook page. She is loved by all <laughs> and appreciated beyond words. Uh, again, let's thank Aubrey for her 15 years of service to Dare County. And finally, we have Jerry Laughlin. Uh, he's a uh, wastewater treatment superintendent of, at Skyco Water Site. Uh, he came to Dare County after 31 years in the Army. He started as an operator in Hatteras and in four years was promoted to superintendent of the Mac Midget plant in Rodanthe. After 13 years in Rodanthe, he was transferred to Skyco Water Treatment Facility in Manio. Uh, Jerry's an, a dependable employee, works well with his staff as well as his interaction with the public. And we'd like to thank Jerry for his 20 years of service to Dare County as well. Thank you, Bobby. Man, that's, uh, that's amazing. I did the math. That, that's 195 years we just <laughs> read. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a lot of years and a lot of good people, so yeah, and that's right. thank them for their, their efforts and their service. Um, 
Item four on the agenda is the public hearing for the manager's proposed 2021 budget. Uh, at our last meeting, we presented the budget to you. Uh, do we have any changes, Dave? Okay, there, I'm, for the first time since I've been here, we haven't had any changes in the, in the interim. So <laughs> what we went through last year is what we're proposing as the budget going forward. Uh, under the state statutes, we have to have a public hearing before you all can adopt the budget. Uh, that's been uh, posted and, and advertised, so this is that public hearing. Uh, we're also uh, required to allow people that want to uh, attend this public hearing, attend in person, and we posted that as well. I don't see anybody here, so there's no one here to attend, uh, but we'll take a second to see if we get any uh, public comment on email, and when that's completed, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you are satisfied, you are authorized to then approve the budget if that's your wish. So we'll take a break just a second for, to see if we get any public comment. Okay, give it a few minutes. Bobby, do we have to wait till 9.30 for that? Was, was that advertised for 930? Yeah, 9 30. Yeah, then let's move on. I didn't know that. Let's. It's just a few minutes. Uh, just a couple of minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll just wait. And that'll, yeah, we can just yeah. wait. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we wait until then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Two minute warning. Two minute warning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Chairman, it's, it's after 9.30, and, and again, no one has shown up, and I haven't seen any emails, so okay. whenever you're ready to proceed. Let's move on. Is right. the, is the, uh, anyone, does the board have any uh, questions about a day with, with respect to this budget? No. <clears throat> is there a, what's the pleasure of the board? There's a motion on the floor Second. by the vice chairman to approve the uh, Manager's proposed 2021 budget as presented. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, 
on that motion. Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <coughs> motion carries unanimous. Thank you, County Manager, today. Thank you. Chairman, next on the agenda is item five. It's the grant project ordinance for the coronavirus relief fund, and, and Dave Clawson will handle that. With your permission, Mr. Chairman, Dave's got items five, seven, and eight. Okay. And if, if you'll allow, we'll just let him do all three of those, and then I'll come back to, um, to number six when he gets done. Okay. Good morning. Um, item five is for um, this is uh, just really just to establish a budget so we're legal um, for the state uh, coronavirus relief fund money. Um, we got actually got the money last week. Um, three counties in the state received it directly from the federal government, and then the other 97 went through the state, but it's still federal funds. Um, the allocation was a base of 250, and as usual, the rest was on permanent population. So we have counties with smaller budgets that's got more receipt than we do. But um, um, <clears throat> I decided to create a separate fund um, to keep it out of the disaster recovery, because normally that's hurricane stuff. Um, well, also, what you have is a grant ordinance, so it doesn't die at June 30th because we have through December 30th, what we spend through December 30th is eligible. So it'll cross fiscal. <coughs> um, also, the FEMA money for coronavirus, I want to move over into that separate fund also so it doesn't get mixed up with hurricane uh, activity. Um, the numbers I put in, the 852149 is the actual number from the state. We've already received that money. The FEMA number is just what I knew we had that was eligible as of last Monday. Um, now, I'm going to talk to you a lot more freely about our plan than I would have because the state changed their position last Thursday. Um, the state's position was that the Relief fund money should be spent first, and then FEMA only for what was left over. Understandably so, because the state had to come up with the 25% match for the FEMA money. What happened Wednesday and Thursday of last week is the federal government said that the state could use their relief, the CARE, their CARES Act money, for their 25% match for any FEMA money. So on Thursday, the state changed their position to what we had been arguing in that whatever's FEMA, if we can determine it's FEMA eligible, we put it in that pot first. That's the 125. Yes, and it will, it will be more than 125, definitely more. Now we know it'll be more than 125. Um, so we'll, we'll maximize that first, and it, it, it's usually not easy to get answers on eligibility questions, and this has been even more so. Uh, but thanks to some contacts that Sandy West has and some contacts that I had, um, we talked last week and, and actually talked with Carteret County, too, um, because we found that the more FEMA literate places were taking this same approach. Um, and some of the plans that we saw, draft plans, um, for the relief fund, I don't want to say didn't make sense, but were kind of um, uneducated as far as FEMA went. Um, a good example of that, there were a lot of, there, there, there are several things that the state relief fund is eligible for, um, and it's the board's decision, but, for example, the board could award money to the school system. The board could award part of the money uh, as grants to small businesses, uh, as loans to small businesses, to nonprofits, and to municipalities. Um, we did research. Um, Norma Houston with the school government told us school systems have a separate pot from the state and are possibly, it's possible that the school system will get more money than we will. Um, 
same thing oh hospitals if you have a local hospital they're eligible but again there's a separate pot of money from the state for that specific funding um, municipalities we read about literally arguments between counties and towns about how much was going to be allocated and saw a couple of example plans where they just said okay you get 20,000 each we're going to take another 50 or 100,000 whatever and allocate it based on population well with FEMA we took the approach that I talked to a couple of towns and said what cost are you going to have that won't be FEMA eligible and it really comes down to the only thing that we can find so far are teleworking costs because of COVID-19. Everything else that they've had will be FEMA eligible. So there's kind of not a need for that allocation if, if all that's eligible except for the teleworking cost. And we've talked to every one of them and that will be in the plan that you see at the next meeting. Um, the plan was due <coughs> last Friday. Um, we didn't turn it in because on Thursday they changed it to the due date to June 15th. Um, there <coughs> also procurement issues. The FEMA procurement was declared as a, an emergency. The, the CARES Act was not. That changed Friday at 5.30. So we're still working on it. Department has had a meeting, um, uh, an, an online meeting this morning with Sheila Davies to start working on the Are you possibly plan. keeping all this stuff straight? This is this well, sounds like chaos. Well, They're directing you from multiple directions with conflicting direction and What we're doing is myself, Dustin from Purchasing, yeah. Ernie from Internal Audit, and Sandy West, who knows all the FEMA stuff, we're doing right. it all together. And um, I think we're getting there. Um, but like the reopening plan is a good example. You asked what, like what things are eligible. Uh, we found out that FEMA, um, all the personal protective equipment, well, let me go back. As we look at reopening biz buildings, public spaces like our lobby and the courthouse and libraries and bomb center, DARE center, um, all the personal protective equipment is eligible for FEMA, all the cleaning's eligible, all the sanitizing is eligible. And, but we have to get together a plan because you know, we know we're gonna have maybe one or two departments that want to do way too much, and we might have one or two that are not doing enough, and Sheila's going to review all that, and we're going to come up with a plan, and we'll put that into our cost and decide, you know, well, we've already decided that that's going to be FEMA. And uh, so we'll be back to you a lot changing, especially the FEMA budget number. Um, you know, another example is the checkpoints uh, for the sheriff deputies. All the equipment use is FEMA eligible. It's not CARES relief fund eligible. All the overtime is FEMA eligible. All the straight time is CARES relief eligible. <coughs> but then the question is, do we have enough money in the CARES Act money to use for that straight time? And we'll work. We'll continue to work on that and be back to you. And we'll have the the draft. If, if well, we'll have the plan back to you on June fifteenth. That would then at least allow some cushion in the sheriff's budget. Then, right? If we were well, able to. Well, see, that's the idea, and, and the problem is we're going across the end of a fiscal year, and we're not going to know, in order to get the benefit in the year that ends June thirtieth. But it, we we got an answer that it's just reporting cost so we don't actually don't have to do journal entries and change everything within that specific year so it may be that sometime during the next fiscal year we'll be able to give some relief back to the general fund for this year everybody got that yeah <laughs> <laughs> fundamentally <laughs> whatever benefit it gets back to the county doesn't go to a department. It goes to the general fund. And right. In the general fund, you all then decide in the budget how to prioritize the use of any of that money. So the salaries, compensation, and expenses remain in the sheriff's budget where they belong. Yes, sir. The 852 is a general fund revenue enhancement that we are then able to. Don't say those words. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. It's, is it revenue or not? It's, it's a you, revenue that we're getting to cover, cover expenses our cost, our cost that have been 
in right. the current sense a day, right. and which we may incur between now and December 31st. That makes perfect and, sense. And yes. I'm sorry, and I'm saying it that way because the one thing we're getting pounded with over and over and over is CARES relief money is cannot be used for revenue losses, but I it can be used saying. to yeah. relieve expenses. Right. So, right. so Dave, right. Just, just another question. So, so the, the North Carolina money is eight fifty two one forty nine. Yes, sir. And then the, the FEMA money that, that you're expecting will be. Well, th that's just what I knew as of last Monday, and you're, you're to give an example, it more than yeah, right. that, that number is just the equipment use allowance for the checkpoints. That's all that amount is, so okay. we're going to start So when, when we get more. ready to, to talk about this more, if we could just have a sort of a summary. Yes, sir. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> It really helped because I, mean, yeah. I don't understand how you, how you got in here. I mean, Typically we've got there. one, and, and we keep it changes every single day and then as of friday like procurement the procurement thing is a real issue because matt's got a list of teleworking equipment but if it was if it was only cares act eligible which, <coughs> which it is we had procurement issues because we have certain <coughs> network specs that we need to meet with certain suppliers and we couldn't do that without a procurement emergency but now we have that so Gotcha. Um, the CARES Act money is a finite pot. That 852 or whatever it is right. is a finite number. And when it's gone, it's gone. The <laughs> FEMA money is not capped. In a hurricane, your FEMA expenses that are eligible are your FEMA expenses. If they're 125, right. they're 125. If they're 5 million, they're 5 million. And so that is a cap. And so whatever our FEMA ex eligible expenses come out to be will be what whatever that is. So when you say it's going to be more than 125, we know based on the list that we have right now that that's about 125. We also know what's coming or some of what's coming. And we have our reopening committee, if you will, meeting now to help us understand what other expenses each department will have. And then we'll allocate those between the eligible FEMA expenses and the ineligible FEMA expenses that we'll take out of the care money. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Right, any other questions today? Is there, is there a motion to adopt the grant project ordinances? So moved. Okay, so that, that's um, motion is by Commissioner House. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Tobin. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed like that? <coughs> motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Dave. Um, we'll go, we'll go to... Um, um, item seven now, right? Yes, the uh, human services. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, good news on that. We had a rebid for the human services project. The only thing they had to rebid was the heating and air conditioning uh, contract. Last Monday, they got me the guaranteed maximum price on Tuesday. Um, the, as an example, just to, so you know, the original... Oakley Collier estimate was four million eight hundred and forty nine thousand when you chose option two from their feasibility study. AR Chesson did their estimate on eighty percent complete drawings and that was four million four. And if you look using just the base bid with the items that were in that base study for Oakley Collier, their final bid was four million three hundred and eighty eight thousand. What that's allowing us to do is add in the bid alternatives which were uh, 19,000 to replace countertops in the existing break rooms, um, 159,000 to replace the flooring in all the existing areas except for the bathrooms, which are already tile, um, replace the data cabling for 144,000 in the existing building. The new data cabling is included in the, the guaranteed maximum price base. And then we had a new item. We had soil uh, borings done in between the two buildings where the, the walk area is, and it makes sense that they didn't excavate and replace the material when the construction happened, but there's unsuitable soils in there. Um, this is an allowance. They think it's very conservative at $100,000. Uh, Chesson told me we think maybe we'll use 50, uh, but they're really not going to know until they start digging. Um, so... I was able to keep 
the same amount that's in the budget and the CIP that you just approved by lowering our contingency by $1,300. So it's the same price as what we were looking at in the CIP and the, in the investment model. Uh, so what we're asking you to do is to um, authorize the county manager to execute change order one, which we'd already executed the construction management risk contract with Chesson. This just sets the guaranteed maximum price with change order one. And um, yeah, allow him to execute that GMP, which includes all the alternates, and then also included uh, facilities maintenance and wanted to do um, key readers on exterior doors and replace all the existing door hardware and locks, and that's also included in the budget. Um, Oh, and I'm sorry, and there's also, in order to do that, there's also an amendment to the capital, capital project, project ordinance, which uh, changes some uh, line items and okay. sets the GMP. Any questions of Dave then? Uh, just a quick one on page 21. It's like down a couple of pages, Dave. Uh, section 4 and Section 5. It, it, section 4, the following revenues are initially <clears throat> anticipated to be available to complete the project, debt proceeds, the 2020 lim Sorry. limited obligation bonds, 5,154. Right. Then in section five, we have DHHS buildings, the 5738 that you've just detailed and explained at the very uh, top. I'm trying to reconcile in my head here that the 5154 it's has been revised to be 5738. No, the 5154 is what you're additionally budgeting right now. And on the page before, we'd already budgeted, um, I don't have the number, but we'd already budgeted the difference, which is mainly the architectural contract. Okay, go ahead. I, I'll talk to you later. Okay. I'm not quite sure I followed that, but okay. We already <laughs> had a budget in place, and the 5154 is just what we're adding to it today. We're adding $5 million to the limited obligation bonds. Yes, sir. And the $5 million that we're adding today is for... The guaranteed maximum price, sorry, um, and we had not budgeted yet the furniture fixtures and equipment, the security uh, system, card readers, door hardware, the permit amount, and the owner's contingency. So we had previously had zero in the limited obligation bond funding for this DHHS remodel? No, we had had the difference between those two numbers, which was the architectural contract and construction testing. You guys all have that? You lost me. I don't. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. We in the, in the previous budgets, we had in the architectural contract. For 492. And the, and the testing for the soil Right, that's a tiny percentage of the overall project. We budgeted that. That was in the budget. Okay, so we didn't use a placeholder. We didn't put in a $5 million estimated right. to be revised. I just waited and, uh, until we, just we left got it zero. Just left until you actually approved the construction, right. moving forward with construction. That's what I was trying to get at, guys. Okay. Okay. Right. Any further questions? Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Motion's been <clears throat> made by Commissioner Ross. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chairman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Item eight. Yes, sorry. I'm going to look at this real quickly and tell you uh, because Dustin told me that Bobby was going to do this one. But <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, it was time to rebid our debris monitoring contract. This is not a <laughs> debris collection company, but this is the the eligible costs for the debris monitors that watch the collection of the debris. Right. Um, so we rebid that on a three-year contract again, and the low bid um, was Thompson Consulting, which has been the company that has held our contract for the last six years. And um, I can tell you they, they do a really good job, and they were low bid, low price, so we're recommending that we renew with Thompson for another. Oh, they're strict. Contract. I've seen them in operation, and they 
they don't mess around. We work well with them. Yeah. yeah. We, we work well together. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're asking that you approve the proposal that's included and authorize the county manager to um, finalize the contract and execute it. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Commissioner I'll Couch. Second. And, <clears throat> and Commissioner Bankman seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <laughs> motion carries unanimous. Thank you so much today. Brings us back to item six. Yeah, item County six Man. on the agenda is a, a request for a zoning map amendment. Uh, in your packet, you have the request for that property to uh, take it from its current zoning, I think, to a C3 zoning. It's been to the planning board. Uh, the planning board has approved it. And so in order for you all to review and act, you have to have a public hearing. And so there's a request to put this on for public hearing for June 15th at 5 o'clock. All right. Is there a motion to um, so put the <laughs> motion on the floor by Commissioner Tobin? Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner House to um, post this on June 15 for a public hearing at 5 p.m. Those in favor of the, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <laughs> motion carries unanimous. Mr. Chairman, item nine on your agenda is the consent agenda, and the only thing on the consent agenda is the approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. There's a motion on the floor, floor by uh, Commissioner House to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Tobin. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Chairman, next on the uh, agenda is item 10, which are the board appointments. And there are a number of these this morning. Uh, First on the list uh, is the College of the Albemarle Board of Trustees. Uh, the chairman's term expires on June, uh, tw in June of 2020, and he'd like to be reappointed for a three-year term. Move to approve. Second. Yeah. Uh, boy, I came in every direction. <laughs> um, it, it was the board. That's right. The board. Um, I believe it, the motion was made by Commissioner House, uh, I mean Couch and uh, Bateman, and was there a second? Second. Second by the vice chair. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <laughs> Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> Next is the Mans Harbor Marina Commission. The terms for Paul Mann, fifth, James, um, Jeff James, and Jesse Outman Sr. expire in June, and all would like to be reappointed for two year terms. Move to reappoint. Motion on the floor by vice chairman to appoint. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Next is the uh, Manio, I'm sorry, the Mans Harbor Community Center. The terms for Clyde Guard and Bobby Sawyer expire. They would like to be reappointed. Move to reappoint. Motion on the floor by Commissioner House to reappoint. Second. Second. Commissioner Bateman, second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, Fessenden Center, I, I don't know, Bobby, if you're going to deal with that a little later on, but did, did we blow by that item item 10? Fessenden Center. It's on there. We'll it's on going. there. All right, I'm sorry. That's the Thank next you. Yep. That's a, that's, two we just got out of order. You're right. Okay. All right. <laughs> we're, coming, we're coming to it, yep. Yeah. Uh, next is the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. Uh, the terms for Melinda Magowski, Stephen Westcott, Jennifer Alexander, Michael Lewis, Tim White, and Marsha Ribner Caddy um, expire, and each of them would like to be reappointed. Move to reappoint all. Motion on the floor by Commissioner House to reappoint all. Second. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Tobin. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <laughs> Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is the Veterans Advisory Council, and the Veterans Advisory Council recommends that Richard A. Probst and Marsha Brown each be reappointed. Move to reappoint. Motion on the floor Second. by the Vice Chairman, seconded by Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <laughs> Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is the Pheasant Center Advisory Board. Uh, Kenneth Bright, Keith Durham, Howie Easley, and John Griffin would like to be reappointed. 
Bonnie Williams and Jenny McBride do not wish to be reappointed and there are no applications for the two spots. Move to reappoint. Motion on the floor by Vice Chairman Overman to reappoint. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Bonnie Williams has uh, been the chair of that for a long time. I mean, for years. And I just want to uh, say with this opportunity to thank her for her service and we'll, uh, uh, that board will decide a new chairman at the appropriate time. Okay. Thank and, you. And uh, Jenny McBride done a great job as well. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like saying? Motion carries unanimous. And that means there's two open seats, is that right, Cheryl? So yes. there's two open seats that we'll have to <laughs> consider at a later time. Um, next is the Hatteras Community Center. Uh, Laura C. Young and Ron Whitaker would like to be reappointed for two year terms. So moved. Uh, motion on the floor by Commissioner Tobin, and second. seconded by Vice Chairman Oberman. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like saying? Motion carries unanimous. Next is the Dare County Waterways Commission. Uh, Danny Couch, Ernie Foster, Natalie Perry Cavanaugh, and Steve Coulter would each like to be reappointed for two year terms. Move to reappoint. Motion, motion on the floor by the Vice Chairman, is seconded by Commissioner House. Those in, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like saying? Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is the Dare County Transportation Advisory Board. Uh, Jenny Zadansky would like to be reappointed for a four-year term. Move to appoint Ms. Zadansky. <clears throat> Motion on the floor by <clears throat> Commissioner Couch, seconded by Urban. Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is the East Lake Community Center Board. Uh, Shelly Parrott resigned in April. The Community Center Board would like to recommend the appointment of Erin Dennison to complete her term to July of 2022. Move to appoint Erin Dennison. <clears throat> uh, motion on the floor by the Vice Chairman Second. to reappoint, seconded by Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <clears throat> motion carries unanimous. Hey, Mr. Chairman, that'd be your agenda. Thank you, County Manager. That brings us to item 11, which is Commissioner Business, Manager's Attorney's Business. And um, I would like to ask Commissioner Bateman, do you mind starting it off today? Be glad to. Um, I will tell you all that uh, business has come back. We, we At the creek, for instance, and my fellow restaurateurs that I've talked and spoke to, um, they've been busy. Now, it's not what we're used to in the past to sit down dining because we're at 50 percent but like last night we did 139 to goes which is unheard of i've never ever ever hit those numbers in the goes now and and the seating is down but all in all we were up about 10 percent in revenue wow um so we'll take what we get in you know, at any time so and we're looking forward to a good a good season i happened to go to Ocracoke last week and they seem to be having a lot of traffic down there, a lot of things happening in Hyde County. And I, when I was going through Hatteras and um, Buxton and so forth, the place was jamming. I think they're jamming more than the lower northern parts of the banks are. They were just phenomenal down there. Um, the chairman alluded to the J-1 students. I can tell you that we are down approximately uh, 12 employees. Wow. Um, and not only do are we down the, the J-1s, but we're having trouble as a whole getting servers. Um, we're having trouble getting cooks in the, in the kitchen, professional guys. And it's, um, it's crazy. We're, we're, we're looking at having to maybe do different things on our hours, um, cross-training people, having waitresses do things that they've never had to do before. Um, it's going to be a very, very tough year for that. I do not see any light. Um, at the end of the tunnel, as far as the J-1s at this time is concerned, we did get an uh, email from a representative that represents the Turkish population, and we might be getting some of those at the end of June, which means that we only have a month. We've got 45 days into June till the 15th of August when everybody goes back to school and then your season's done. Before with. they go back to what? 
45 days from before they go back to college. Yeah. It's a lot back of college school. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who said we're going back to school? No, we, he's talking about the J ones. Oh, the J ones. Right. Are they going back to school? Yeah, August tenth's being thrown around for a lot of a lot of schools, yeah. academic institutions yeah. already. Hmm. And Dare and Dare County, um, you know, they, they announced what's the seventeenth. Yeah. So we're going back to school. I believe we are. I mean, I hope we get back to normal by that time. I hope we have full capacity in my restaurant by that time also, but we'll, that remains to be seen. Anyway, that's um, kind of where we are there. I will tell you, I'll comment on the flood insurance and flood stuff. Um, I've explained before my situation in my house in Okacoke. The... Um, before my insurance there was four thousand nine hundred dollars a year, and this is just a small little old oak built in 1961 that was um, three foot off the ground. It got flooded, and then um, we, of course, we received proceeds from the National Flood Insurance to replace the damage and done, and they were very fair with us. Um, we raised the house up. Now we received what's called an ICC claim which is also by the flood insurance. So they'll give you $30,000 to raise the house up. We raised it up six, you know, seven foot, which puts it now about 10 foot above floodplain, um, which is good and we hope it never gets flooded again. The good news is my flood insurance now is $320, <laughs> which is really, really good. <laughs> I just got the bill Friday and I went, oh my gosh. <clears throat> so you spend, and, and, and Although it took more than the thirty thousand to to fix it, it probably took pro close to seventy for me to raise it up. But the thirty thousand dollars came in handy to help me do that. Anyway, so that's that's where we are on that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is my fervent hope that the anarchy we are witnessing on a daily basis will be properly dealt with by the authorities in the cities and states where it is occurring. The death of Mr. George Floyd was a travesty, and we join in mourning his loss in such a tragic and uncalled for manner. Hopefully, justice will be served. Peaceful protests on his behalf are entirely understandable and justified. However, rioting, looting, arson, destruction of property, violence, and outright anarchy is not. I call upon the governor of North Carolina to act quickly and decisively to prevent any further devastation of lives and property in our state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well said, Vice Chairman. Thank you very much. Commissioner Howe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank the uh, staff for uh, their dedicated years of service, which we've been through, uh, that we went through earlier this, this, uh, this morning. <coughs> and uh, to uh, Joanne uh, Selby, Congratulations on your retirement, and hope you have an enjoyable time with that. Um, also, it seems that every time I come to a commissioner's meeting, I'm talking about another, another death that has affected us. This past week, Carteret County Commissioner Jonathan Robinson passed away uh, suddenly. He was an, a very strong advocate for our commercial fishing industry in Carteret County and did a lot of work with... Uh, with our representatives in Raleigh. Uh, I relied on him a couple of times uh, through some of our other issues. And uh, he will be sorely missed throughout the community in Carteret County, and not only that, but also our commercial fishing industry as well. And uh, needless to say, on that same day, the uh, United States government put out uh, another uh, update for uh, 2020 of most regulated industries in the United States. Uh, in 2019, and the uh, commercial fishing industry was ninth. As of 2020 now, it is now seventh most regulated industry in North Carolina, I mean, uh, uh, in the United States. Um, and with that being said, not only are we fighting uh, re uh, reg regulations, uh, here locally in the state, the North Carolina Coastal Fisheries Reform Group um, has filed a lawsuit against uh, North Carolina regulators and also uh, announces six different trawling companies. And 
they're trying to uh, have that so that trawlers cannot trawl for shrimp in our sounds. They are stating that the bycatch discard <coughs> violates the Federal Clean Water Act. Now keep in mind, uh, the North Carolina trawling industry is leading the nation in bycatch reduction. And you can go on YouTube and you can watch several of these guys that have put films out when they pull the nets in and cut the nets and put them on, on, onto, the, onto the boats. You can actually count the number of fish. And it's a very low number that you see. And even with those bycatch of fin fish in those nets, 90% of what they catch is a, it would, in there is actually a sellable fish. So your bycatch is basically very little. Minimal. At best. Um, and I'm not sure about the reasoning but fish die in our sounds every day. It's a way of life. You live, you die. And I don't see where the mass numbers that they're projecting even comes close to what's actually happening out there. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this, uh, on this lawsuit and see where it goes. Um, I want to uh, also mention our day in history one year ago was the Virginia Beach tragedy where a uh, gunman went into the Virginia Beach uh, town offices and uh, just started shooting. And uh, that was a definite tragedy that, that has, has gone on in that community for ever since that point in time. And I just wanted to recognize it again and say that um, we're still behind you, Virginia Beach. And to uh, echo our vice chairman's comments on, over uh, George Floyd's death, I too am appalled about that. Um, I understand the justifications of peaceful protests. Definitely justifiable. I was in emergency services for over 30 years and seeing that video of what happened, not only with the officer with his knee on, on his neck, but also the other officer standing by and not doing anything about it is reprehensible to me. Um, also, um, I am very pleased to say I know a good vast majority of our law enforcement officers here in Dare County. And those officers will go the extra mile every single day to help our citizens. And I don't know of any one of them that has ever had a complaint filed against them for abuse of, abuse of power. And that's one of the good things we have here in Dare County. And uh, my heart does go out and my condolences go, goes out to the Floyd family. And, uh, but the, uh, the looting and the uh, anarchy that's going on has to stop. You're not doing any favors to anybody by doing that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner House. Commissioner Ross. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Uh, with the Albemarle Commission, we have been uh, operating with a temporary executive director, an acting executive director, for some months now. And uh, as a result of our search, vetting, interview process, we have a candidate who is now in the final stages of negotiating and making the job offer. And when that is completed and accepted, I'll bring that back to you. But we feel very confident that we have a seasoned, senior, well-experienced candidate who uh, can bring a lot of value to that commission. And uh, we're very pleased about that. On a separate note, they continue to operate with uh, tremendous pressure, especially in the area agency on aging, with requirements for additional in-home visits, wellness checks, dealing with not just the physical uh, shortage of healthy meals, but desperation, loneliness, abandonment, seniors that do not have 
the ability to be mobile, to, to visit a friend or have a family member visit them. Uh, volunteers no longer willing to volunteer for fear of exposure. So there is enormous stress under that right now throughout our 10 counties, and I am uh, uh, continuing to offer all the support from the board in the way of funding or additional staffing or whatever needs that that particular group need, needs and requires at this time. On a separate front, as we follow the daily statistics from the state, we have now uh, reported as of Friday 886 total deaths in the last 90 days here in the state of North Carolina. Sadly, um, and I've watched this daily and weekly, the percentage in nursing homes remains relatively constant. So what I'm saying is 84% of the fatalities are in nursing homes. It was 84% six weeks ago, and it's 84% today. And the numbers have gone up roughly 150 or so. And the sad tale is we have not been able to curtail and eliminate the enormous risk to those most vulnerable, those living within the confines of a congregate living facility. And uh, I just, it just feels that we could have or should have, I don't know, made other provisions because it's, they don't have a chance. They've got to have someone look out for them, these people. As I said, my father-in-law is here in town at Spring Arbor. They have had zero cases. They are in complete restricted lockdown, and it has worked. The 70 residents there have zero infections, zero risk of loss of life. And I don't, for the life of me, understand why the rest of the state, in individual cases, hasn't been able to do that. Because right now, from the statistics, these 886 deaths, just about 700 can be traced to nursing homes, which is 533, and an additional 160 or so to folks who are over the age of 75 that may or may not, in fact, all probability, comorbidities. The, in essence, the takeaway is if you're under 65, there are roughly 190 people who have passed in 90 days in our 10 and a half million population state. 190, 10 and a half million in the state over the last 90 days. Thankfully, that is an enormously small percentage, which indicates a lot of good. It's all focused on nursing homes and seniors. If we could get that under control, folks, I think we would see a really, really good turnaround in our numbers. But for some reason, we have not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Ross. Commissioner Tevin? Yeah, I would like to echo what Rob was just talking about. Um, I've been in contact with the state ombudsman for nursing homes. Uh, I, uh, I'm, on the I'm the, on the Community Action Advisory Council for nursing homes and extended living facilities. Uh, we have been restricted from going into nursing homes. We are the people that are responsible for the patient's rights. You can't get in. They will not let us in, and which is very, very frustrating. Yes. Because we're the ones that should be allowed in yes. as oversight. Um, we could, you know, do all the protocols. Screen you at the door. Temperature. Screen us at the evaluation. door. The staff can go in. Right. But they're not letting the, the people who have oversight over the facilities in. It's very frustrating. Uh, I, I have personally spoken with Ombudsman about it, and uh, they're getting shut down by the higher-ups. So we don't know what we can do about it, but something needs to be done. Um, with that said, prayers for everybody that are in them, because we, are, we have been blessed at our facilities. We did have some cases at the nursing home here. Uh, luckily, it did not get transmitted to any of the patients. Right. It, it was all staff. And resolved, yes. <clears throat> so we, we were very lucky. Um, moving on, um, the dredge project still at the attorney's office. <laughs> uh, hopefully, the attorney will be done with it this, this week, and it will be a copy of it will, will be sent to us to oversee. And then uh, it will be signed and the project will start. 
And last but not least, I would like to thank the Lord for sunshine. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Because it has been one wet week. It has. Been. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tobin. Commissioner Cow. Yeah, uh, kind of want to follow up uh, on some of the things that Irvin said. Uh, this is a serious situation with the J1 and the uh, uh, HB2, uh, not, uh, H2B people. Uh, uh, they're critical, and uh, with that in mind, I do want to. I marvel at the retail and the restaurateurs and the food and, and beverage, uh, the real estate companies. And I'm not just talking about in Hatters. I've been monitoring what's going on from top to bottom the entire length of the county. And our, our people are rising to the top. They've got a tough job. I mean, a lot of these guys are, uh, companies are operating. 50, 60 percent of capacity, and the morale is still good. People want to get back to work. I'm seeing a, a lot of people who've been given a, a, a lot of managers, uh, a lot of senior people who've been in uh, the hospitality business. They are taking charge, and they're getting it done. Uh, for the past two weeks down in Hatteras, uh, we've been at capacity uh, with rentals, and uh, that pretty sure that's uh, based on conversations we had this morning that that's the same uh, up here as well and uh, I just I, I, I want and I'm sure I, I can speak for the board I, I want our business community to know uh, that we support you we're appreciative of all the efforts that you're making you're going the extra mile you're not getting home until late uh, you, you, you're some of your families are sacrificed you're having to sacrifice your families a little bit uh, but you're we, we are sympathetic and just are, are grateful for, for the services that you're providing. With Forbes listing uh, the Outer Banks as the number one uh, safe place to go, uh, I know we have sweated uh, uh, what kind of uh, season we're going to have. Uh, but if the past two weeks have been any indication, buckle up. And uh, uh, I am grateful for that, uh, you know, uh, we've got bills to pay, uh, college tuitions to take care of, mortgage payments. So thank you, everyone who's in the hospitality business and everyone who's uh, also involved in, in, in county government as well. I, I will say, when I took this seat four years ago, having been spent my whole life here, I've always known how good our people are. And this is not a sound bite. This is what I have witnessed uh, with this latest, with COVID-19 here. Our people are phenomenal. There is just, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are other very efficient and well-managed county governments, local governments within this state. But if they are uh, on the level that what I'm witnessing, North Carolina is a great place to, uh, to be, to, to be living. Uh, lastly, uh, just uh, Nancy Griffin, I serve on a board, uh, Children Youth Partnership. It's a very high-performing board, a lot of good people on there, close camaraderie. And uh, Nancy going to be out for a little bit, and Sarah Sampson has been moved in in the interim there. But uh, please uh, reach out to Children Youth Partnership. Just let them know uh, that uh, uh, we're, we're happy that We've got some capable leadership in there still to carry that flag. They do a great job for our children and youth. I, I enjoy being a part of that board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if, if I could, Danny, on the subject of the seasonal help, I've been looking into this, obviously saw our resolution requesting some latitude. There's apparently a, a considerable public relations headwind that we're bucking. 30 million Americans are filing for unemployment as we sit here and talk and discuss the need to bring in roughly, what, 1,000, 500 in that range? I'm looking at Irvin. Is Usually possibly average is about 1,500. 1,500. And if you step back from our situation, which I understand is very real and very important to the Outer Banks, I'm, my question is how do we convey a message that's convincing enough that those at a macro level who look at the 30 million unemployed drawing unemployment benefits and say, well, of course you should bring in another 1,500 from overseas. Do you see what I'm saying? Someone not in our... It's ironic. Not in our situation would look at that and say, not just no, hell no. 
And, and that's what we've got to overcome because our situation is so much different and unique versus virtually the rest of the rest of the country. And I don't know that we have made that case effectively yet. We have enabled our people to not work, Thank to you. not want to work. That's exactly if, right. I, I had a conversation with an employee and I said, your weight position is there for you. I'd love to have you come back. And the reply I got was, I'm working under the table with a family member and I'm drawing $600 from the federal government right. and 350 from the state of North Carolina. Why would he want to come back? Right. They need to end that. So we've created the incentive not to work. You got it. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So we are the masters of our own problem. Yeah. A yeah. lot of our, uh, even even our local fish houses <laughs> here have asked their employees to come back, and their employees have told them, I'm making more money sitting at home. Right. Well, if you, you go, document that you, you have tried to rehire them, and they do not come back, and you report it, they lose their benefits. In some situations, we've done that. I just had the conversation with this gentleman yesterday. In some cases, we've done that. It's and, a, you and know, that's we, only fair. Yeah. yeah. We, we've kind of created this thing within ourselves. Now we have business coming back. Um, the, the thing we have as a community, we got to get by. We have to get the, the information out. We are open for business. You know, we're doing everything we possibly can to allow you to come in and be safe. Our employees are... are um, you know, at, at the, for instance, us, we have monitors every day. We hit their forehead with a gun. We know what their temperature is when they come in the mornings. We know what their temperature is when they leave in the afternoon. And if, if it's anything above what it's supposed to be, they don't work that day. I don't care how short I am. They go home. We've already had two that didn't come to work because of that. They just had a stomach pain. But you've got to do what you've got to do in this business to make ends meet mm -hmm. and to fill those positions. I'm having trouble Here's people are having trouble filling those positions, and, and, and the volume's still there. We're operating with between 25 and 30 percent less employees that we had last year. I had 24 waitresses last year on June 1st. Today, I have 15. What am I going to do? Cut hours? Cut days of operation? Which means you're cutting Yeah, revenue. that's kind of the only, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face by reducing yeah. hours of operation. Yeah. That's terrible. Oh, God. It's the first week of June. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm oh. getting ready to get handed to me big time. <laughs> All right. So that, brings, that brings us to county manager's business. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I have two things. Uh, one is on <coughs> our budget ordinance. When I make a change in a department or reorganization or something, I'm supposed to tell you all. It doesn't require approval. It just requires me to report out. And we've made a change uh, in the tax office. We have four personal property tax people over there that had previously reported to an appraiser. Um, we've changed that. We've taken what was the uh, uh, office manager and turned it into the per personal property supervisor and moved those four people to report to the to the personal property supervisor rather than to an appraiser. That required a change in grade from a 67 to a 70 and a little bit of a bump in salary for the supervisor. Uh, on the other hand, it was a budget neutral move. It didn't cost us anything because we right. had some new employees coming in to that department and they came in at lower salaries than some longer term people that had left. And so it all washed out uh, in the end. And so I'm just disclosing to you that's what we've done. Uh, in that department as the budget ordinance requires. Um, and previously the board had given me authority to do things within the department as long as they were budget neutral. So we did right. those things. Um, the second thing is uh, over in Manio, the Manio Commons property, um, there's been some demand from uh, the downtown merchants. They're busy as Commissioner Couch has said and parking has been a problem and there's been a request made um, for the use of that Manor Commons as a temporary park and as the town goes through the, the grant process. Uh, in our lease, we said they had to build a, a parking lot and we went through all that sort of thing. Uh, they're asking, can they be allowed to use that property um, in the interim um, as a temporary parking to, I think they said they would get like 37 or 35 spots in there the way they had it arranged. 
and that some of the work they would do in there for the temporary could be retained as a part of the permanent so they're not throwing money away in the short run. And so um, I don't have a problem with that, but because we've got it under lease for a different purpose, I wanted to be sure you all didn't, and so I'm, I'm bringing it to you all for your authorization for me to allow them to, to use that parcel for that, per, for that temporary par parking. Um, I will tell you that they are applying for and have applied for their part of grants. They've, I think they've applied for a tourism board grant. There's one other grant, and I can't remember what it is, that the manager told me that they were applying for. Um, I know on the part of grant, I sent a letter in support of that grant. They had to have a letter of support, so I sent one in on behalf of the county uh, supporting that project. And so I know that stuff is underway, and hopefully they'll get these grants and we can get this project rolling pretty soon. Move to approve. The motion on the floor uh, by Vice Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tobin in the House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried unanimous. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, County Manager. <clears throat> Finance Director, Mr. Clawson, you have anything else for us today? Thank you very much. So that, um, that brings us to a uh, close of our meeting. and. I ask for a motion to adjourn until 5 p.m. on June 15. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Commissioner House, seconded. Second. I'll second it. By, by <laughs> Commissioner Tobin. Don't everybody speak at once. Any, any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you all.